I've waited so long for this. I will finish what you started. What's up, everybody? My name is Razorblade. Cool Cat Saves the Kids. About eight months ago, Cool Cat Saves the Kids was all over YouTube, especially with the creator, Derek Savage, or Daddy Derek as he'd like to go by, was issuing copyright strikes everywhere on any review he could find with the movie, including I Hate Everything, Hosiah Clark, sorry if I said the name wrong, and Bob Show himself. During this time period, a huge battle went all over YouTube to try and sort this thing out. Even the nostalgia critic himself got involved in the situation trying really hard to prove that the copyright system on YouTube is broken beyond belief. Shit, even I have my own fair use problems, and it sucks. Even though Derek no longer protects the film and goes out of his way to try and strike videos down, he still has a bit of notoriety. The film still has a huge place in infamy, being the movie that sparked the Where's the Fair Use movement. That being said, recently Bob Show issued a challenge to say what you have to say about Cool Cat Saves the Kids, and I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. <laughs> Let's rip this shit apart. This is Cool Cat Saves the Kids. All right, so the file that I got for the movie actually came with about a minute of the DVD's menu. Nice menu, by the way. We had to give the audience members that's already tripping on LSD a fucking heart attack. So the movie finally begins, and we get to see the people behind the film. And we find that Derek Savage has both written, directed, and produced the film. That is never a good sign. Ever. This is a special news report. We have terrible news. Bullies have been picking on children everywhere, and it is tragic. There has to be a way to stop the bully. Help! Help! It's everywhere being bullied! What the fuck kind of town has a place called Bully's Diner? Doesn't sound like a good place for business. But it's okay. Despite the serious bully trouble going throughout town, we find that Cool Cat is here to save the kids, as the kids absolutely loves him. So the film finally begins, and we finally get to meet the main character himself, Cool Cat. Wow! This looks great! <laughs> there you go, sign! Oh my god, he's talking to an animal and objects. This is going to fucking suck, isn't it? Hello, this is Cool Cat. Who are you? And what's your name? You are so funny. Um, that's a touch phone, right? Normally those have something called caller ID, so you should know who's calling. <laughs> really? I'll get it. Thanks! My hands are full! <laughs> yeah, no, no. You keep up the good work, man. You keep up the good work, man. You take a breather, you know, let me get it, you know. Keep up the good work, Cool Cat. Keep it up. Hi, Maria. Cool Cat's in the kitchen. I know, we're making signs and they're awesome! Uh, how did you know he was in the kitchen? I mean, guys, I've seen all the reviews for this film, but I think we're focusing all on the wrong creep. Hi, Cool Cat! It's a beautiful day! Hi, Maria! I love it when it's pretty outside! Ooh, we can make it our temporary office! Yeah, we'll call it Cool Cat for President Office! And we're open for business! <laughs> Come on, let's go! <laughs> Yeah, that just actually happened. And this is the way it is throughout the entire fucking movie. Cool Cat always acts this way. He's always screaming. He's always waving his hands around like there's something to do. He's like Mike Myers in Cat in the Hat. It's not cool, it's just awkward. And probably the best way possible, to be honest. Good golly! People like you on the team? How could we go wrong? You saw that, right? You saw that weird, faulty edit? You saw it, right? How could you miss it? Stuff like that is all over the movie. The editing in this film is absolutely dreadful. I, mean, I don't have an ego, I promise, but I could have edited this better. I really could have. And I use some really cheap shit you can get anywhere. Now, I know what you're thinking. This film needs a bit of conflict, doesn't it? I mean... This could get really boring real fast if there's nothing happening. Well, don't worry. We're about to get an amazing villain. And what's his first line? Bored, I feel like picking on someone. Bored, I feel like picking on someone. Are you fucking kidding me? Again, the editing in this film is awful, and the audio cuts out at times for no good reason. I feel like 
There was a word there, and the microphone just didn't pick it up, and they said, fuck it. Seriously, guys, that sentence needs a conjunction. Otherwise, it's just going to sound stupid. Oh, and by the way, this is Butch the Bully. Yes, they actually named him Butch. Butch the Bully. That's his name. And I'll be honest, what the fuck were they thinking with this casting? Seriously, this is about as bad as Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Or, I'm sorry, Lex Luthor Jr. Seriously, though, look at this kid, though. He's pretty wide for a child his age. He's got long hair, some goofy-looking teeth, and he's even got a bit of a lisp. I'm sorry, guys, but this kid should be bullied himself. Wait a minute. Huh. Maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe this kid is bullied. Oh, okay, I see where they're going. This kid is bullied, and the film shows that sometimes violence is like a cycle. He's being bullied by someone bigger and worse than him, so he has to take his anger out on other people. That's a good idea. It's teaching teaching kids that that's how bullies can start. Like an abusive father, or another bully, or maybe he's just stressed out. Like having bad grades, or like he's on the swim team maybe. Well, not for this kid, but <laughs> you get what I'm talking about. I'm dead wrong, aren't I? Sadly, that's not the direction this film goes with. Kind of like the atheist from God's Not Dead, instead of having some complexity and sh giving these characters a good motivation behind their actions, they decide to just say, fuck it, he's a bully, that's all we need. Which is definitely going to bite this film in the ass later. You'll see. It's a snack cool cat Maria. They think they're so cool. Long road, punk up. Did he just say punk up? Is that like his catchphrase? Is he, is he going Super Saiyan? Why, why would you say punk up? So using his phone, he decides to send some harsh text messages to Maria, which raises the good question, where did he get her number? Hey, Cool Cat, I just got a text, but I don't know who it is. Well, there's only one way to find out. So see what it says. It could be good news. I love to get good news. Yeah, me too. What if it's a secret contest? And I just want a whole bunch of money. Then we can take a nice trip together. That's a splendid idea. We could travel all over the world. Yippee! Aw, there is absolutely nothing charming about this whatsoever. It just comes off as insanely creepy. Listen to us, someone just texted me. You're ugly and your hair looks like rat hair. Why would somebody say that? I don't know, but that's really, really mean. Ooh, that person's just a big, big bully. Oh, ah. Fucking straight a little shit. <laughs> Kylo Ren, fear me. Is this kid a bully, or is he a fucking Dementor in disguise? I love being the bully! Just to clarify, this guy, this kid right here, the blonde kid, who's fat, and has been texting mean things to Maria, is the bully. We're gonna say this again, nice and slow. He is the bully. Do you understand? That guy is the bully. He's the bully. Hey, cool cat. I just got a text from the same person. Should I open it? Sure. You know, maybe they feel bad about that really mean text, and now they want to apologize. Cool Cat, you're a fucking idiot. Just shut up. So see what it says. You're right, Cool Cat. And always look at the best side of everything. I love you for that. Thanks, Maria. And I love you too. And I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids. Unbelievable. I mean, it's astounding, really. It really is astounding. I mean, aside from being creepy as all fuck, what motivated him to say that line anyway? Oh no, this text says that I'm fat and ugly. Ha ha ha! It worked again! I just pumped it! Okay, I tend not to judge dialogue too badly, because I kind of have a soft spot for words like that. You know, kind of a, well, they're silly, sure, but they made me laugh, so I kind of like, eh, yeah, whatever. But I gotta ask. Did anyone ever use the word punk in that way before? The only time I ever heard the word punk in real time, ever, like in real life, was when someone was talking about that show on MTV a couple years ago. That's the only time. Never have I heard it be used to describe 
pranking somebody before. Hello, this is Cool Cat. Why do they call you Cool Cat? They should call you Dumb Cat. <laughs> First place. It's not like he was really hiding that well. What's the matter with him? He's always bullying somebody, and he has no friends. That's not fun. Yeah, he doesn't have fun like we do. Yeah, and you know what? It's silly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That um, th that just happened. Um, not really sure what to say about it. So, let's just move on. Move on. Let's just move on. So, because Cool Cat and Maria are having fun again, Butch decides to take a random can of paint that he just finds in a bucket somewhere, and decides to ruin their signs. But, unfortunately, gets some sprayed in his eye, teaching everyone back home that karma will solve all their problems. Wait. Hey, Jamie! And you boneheads, get over here! What do you want, Butch? Yeah. What is it? Look at this. Let's go have fun. What are you talking about? Yeah, lay it out, man. Yeah, come on, lay it out, man. What's the 401? Swiggity swag, what's in your plan bag? Come on, man. How are we gonna punk those groms? Gnarly. What I'm talking about is having some fun. We're painting our new logo. We're calling ourselves the bad boys. Yeah, hello. Detroit Pistons? Yeah. I think I have a movie you guys need to see. Paint a big B on a wall. I bet the B stands for Butch. No, it don't, so shut up. It stands for Batman. Hey, Cool Cat, look. There's another one. Wow. Now that is groovy. Okay, now that shit I won't fucking tolerate. Seriously, guys, groovy? I mean, come on. That fucking word died faster than Disco did. Hey! Hey look, Maria! There's Madison! And... She looks sad! What's the matter, Madison? You... Lose your favorite toy? It's worse than that! Dude, this girl looks like she's 12! Why the fuck would she be playing with toys? Kids are graffitiing on a sandbox and it's not pretty anymore! That's horrible! And at one of the sandboxes, they even took a toy shovel! Now we can't build sandcastles! Oh no! Now they've escalated to stealing! Ooh! You should never take something that doesn't belong to you! Dude, why are you telling the victim that? Don't they already know? Oh no, look! It's Push the Bully! It looks like he's up to no good! That's the perfect spot to put the beam on. He's about to graffiti our neighbor's wall! And it's not cool to... Paint on someone's wall! You know, I think this girl over here should have really gotten an Oscar. I mean, just look at that performance. She really, really cares about what's going on right now. Okay. Give that bitch an Oscar! Just give it to her already! Cool Cat's so brave. Yeah, he's a real crime fighter. Wait, hey, stop, Jamie, bitch! Stop! Stop! Oh no! Here comes Cool Cat! Hey, Jamie, you're a fish! Uh, why do you want to paint the wall like that? It looks like Butch left you holding the can! Yeah, I guess so. Dude, you could have easily ran away just as easily as Butch did. You chose to stand there and get caught yourself. That was your fault. You know, my parents have a saying, with friends like that, you better not have any enemies. So why do you want to paint the wall? You know, I bet all of you already know about this, but I'm going to point out anyway. That guy in the background who saw the cat angrily screaming at children and decided to back away slowly as not to be seen, is like one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I mean, it's not every day we get a rare gem like that. Like, I say, treasure this. Fucking treasure this. So why do you want to paint the wall? Because nobody loves us. We tag in other people's things, 
so that they know we were there. Nobody cares for us. That's why we do it. You guys are like 10. Are you serious? What, did daddy take away your makeup and he won't let you listen to My Chemical Romance in the car? Grow the fuck up! Also, remember what I said earlier about this film having a one-dimensional bully be the villain would end up biting this film in the ass earlier? Well, how come these two bullies get to have development, but Butch is just hopeless? It doesn't make a lot of sense. How come these two get to have a reason for being bullies, but Butch is just an asshole? What kind of mixed messages are you sending me, movie? But apparently, Cool Cat loving all children, apparently, ew, is enough to convert these bullies from evil to good. And that's just how it works. I mean, who cares about the complexities of turning from evil to good? It just works. Kind of like The Purge. Be cool when no one's around. Yeah, let's have some integrity and clean up the sandboxes that we tag. I'm down with that, man. Yeah, I'm down with that too, man. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm hip. I'm radical. I'm I'm cool. I can, I'm totally cool with the Groms and shit. Gnarly. That's groovy. So if Butch's plan foiled, he runs away off the planet. Another dastardly deed. And Cool Cat and Maria are left behind to talk about what just happened. You see, I think every kid has something special inside of them. They just have to discover what it is. Yeah, all except Butch, right? He's pretty much hopeless, isn't he? Have a seat. What the fuck? No, seriously, what the fuck is this guy doing? In front of a little girl? Cool cat! Have you no shame? How could anyone look at this footage and think it was okay to put in this kid's film? Also, by the way, cats don't like having their belly rubs. I have two of them. They don't like that shit. Dogs do. So Cool Cat and Maria go inside to have dinner and OH MY GOD DADDY DEREK FUCKED THE CAT OH MY GOD THE IMPLICATIONS HERE ARE FUCKING INFINITE Well, I guess we can't call Daddy Derek gay now He's definitely a man who loves the pussy, am I right? <laughs> I'll go away, I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry Sorry The weird thing is though is that Derek really, really loves his wife Like, a lot Hey, come on over here, honey. Look how clean we got everything going right here. It looks great. Thanks for your help in the kitchen. Oh, you know I love to help you all the time. I'm gonna get over and give me a hug. Mmm, mmm. Oh, no. No, Derek, no. Oh, no. Daddy, don't. Stop. Just stop. So Cool Cat decides to go through his emails, and we get this. <gasps> Look at me. I'm surfing the web. <laughs> I think this is the scene that made me realize that I fucking love this movie so much. I mean, it is so stupid and incompetent and just has no bearings to the plot whatsoever, but I just can't help but laugh at this. I mean, it's awful. It's fucking awful, but it's hilarious too. I love it. So Cool Cat gets an email and finds out that he's being cyberbullied. Oh no, what's he going to do about it? You have a... A fat nose? Oh! My parents said I should always be cool and tell the truth. So that's what I'll do. If you were nice, you would have more friends. And friends are cool. Obviously not the right thing at all. Your breath stinks and smells like cat food? Oh! Yeah, because that's exactly what a fucking bully would type to you. Yeah, so Cool Cat goes to bed immediately after this happens, and we go into dreamland as the film is so incompetent it actually has to tell you what's going on. Like, the audience is not smart enough to figure this shit out. Wow! This must be dreamland! Nice green screen effect. No, no. Seriously, you're giving the new Ghostbusters film a run for its money. I'm gonna learn to stand up for myself! Yes! 
That's a great way to stop bullying. Stand up for yourself. I wish I could say this is the worst problem of the film, even though it's definitely not. But it's not just a problem with this film, but with a lot of movies that try to convey this kind of message involving anti-bullying. How the message is relayed to the audience. It simply just says, stand up for yourself, but it never goes into detail as to how to stand up for yourself. We'll see later in the film that just shouting and making a lot of noise is enough to work, but a lot of the cases it doesn't. I mean, there are bullies out there that could have seriously dangerous implications, like they could carry weapons with them, or they could just straight up be bigger than you. Screaming isn't always going to work, guys. You need to show more cases. And it's especially really hard to portray that message when the main character is a 35-year-old man screaming at little kids. It's kind of hard to take this seriously. Oh, wow! What a crazy dream! It looked like a really bad green screen effect! It was awful! So Cole Cat wakes up to find that Daddy Derek is going to take him to Hollywood for the day, and he's going to be part of a big Hollywood parade. Here, I'll help you get in the car here. Was it locked? Yes, it was, Daddy Derek. Well, that's for safety purposes. Wow, that was definitely a scene that needed to be in the movie. Totally. You couldn't just cut to them already in the car leaving or do it again, but... Whatever. It's... Whatever. This film has already proven it's so incompetent and lazy that I'm not even going to care anymore. At all. Hello? Wow, this is great. I'll tell Cool Cat right now and thanks. Guess what, Cool Cat? That was a Hollywood parade. Wow! It's showtime! Hi, everybody! It's me, Cool Cat, and I've got a fantastic story to tell you! It's about a parade, but not just any parade, the Hollywood Parade. But first, we have to go back to my fun house. So come on, kids, let's all go to Cool Cat's Fun House. Here we are, Cool Cat, we're back. Yeah. So we find that they drove into town to get the phone call that they're going to be in the parade, then come home. Why couldn't you just do this shit at home? But apparently the reason they actually came back is because they need Mama Cat's permission for some reason. Why? Well, the only reason I can assume is because Daddy Derek is pussy way to my right. <laughs> uh, fuck you, that was funny. So Cool Cat decides to tell Maria all about the big news. You will not believe what happened today in Hollywood. I was cast to be in the Hollywood Parade! You're joking, that's fantastic! What is it happening? It's happening in a couple of days, but... Oh no! I, I just realized something. I've got a lot to do before then. What should I do? You could probably do it. I mean, the fuck? So apparently all the things that Cool Cat has to do before the parade is to get a cool car and write a cool song. Do you have any other suggestions? Oh, Daddy Derek, I'm full of suggestions! Like, how about Cool Cat loves to rock and roll? Oh, yeah! Cool Cat loves the Boogie Woogie! Oh my gosh, Daddy Derek, how can I forget about Boogie Woogie? <laughs> and trust me, it's about as uncool as you can possibly imagine. All in favor of some death clock, raise your hands. I, I don't even need to see your hands, you said yes, so here we go. Apparently this scene only exists in the movie so Derek Savage can show off his Van Halen signed guitar. I bet you Van Halen's really regretting that now, huh man? That he is. But, believe it or not, we actually get another song! Yeah, two in a row! This time, however, with a shitty green screen effect! My name is Cool Cat and I'm the coolest cat there is. I love to play and have fun and I'm always on the run. The sun is shining and I'm feeling fine. So everybody listen to the words I'm saying. All in favor of some suicide silence, say aye. Nope, you don't even have to say it. Nope. Do it anyway. Fuck you! Wow, that was fun! 
So, after all of that, we finally get to see Cool Cat go to this gosh damn parade. And we get to see him interact with all the cool shit that's there, apparently. Look! It's the Back to the Future car! It's called a DeLorean, dude. Now we got the Batmobiles! Well, okay, at least kids will recognize that one. Here's the Jurassic Park vehicle! Can you not say the word a Jeep? I mean, you can say the Jurassic Park Jeep, but... It's a fucking Jeep, man. Ooh, ooh, look! It's the Knight Rider car! Do kids really know what the fuck Knight Rider is? Oh, wow! Here's the Starsky and Hutch car! You have fucking Bumblebee and the goddamn mystery machine in the background, but you're gonna talk about the fucking Starsky and Hutch car? Are you fucking kidding me? Good golly! Here's the red Ferrari from Magnum P.I. Vroom! Vroom! I think Daddy Derek just saw stuff that he liked and forgot that kids like other stuff. There's no ghost here, and that's because the Ghostbusters car is here! The Ecto-1, you fucking twat! Here. Isn't the Smokey and the Bandit car pretty? I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs> so Cool Cat goes throughout the rest of the parade, and then we get this weird revelation. Cool Cat, the coolest cat in town. Cool Cat is the creation of Hollywood's very own Derek Savage. What the fuck? Wait, did Derek Savage just use official parade footage from like the news or something? Why? Why is this in the movie? Come to think of it, what does any of this have to do with bullying or the film itself? It's all pointless, isn't it? Over 20 minutes of this about hour-long movie, about a third of the movie is fucking pointless. So the movie finally gets back on track with its anti-bullying story, and we find out that Cool Cat is going to meet Maria at Vivica A. Fox's house for some reason. Like, is that Maria's mom? Why can't they just say Maria's mom? Weird. I mean, think about it. It's weird. Do you ever get a friend and go to someone else's house that's not yours or your friend's house? I didn't think so. Yes. Vivica said any time is great for the kids, and I'll be ready in a couple minutes. Hey, I bet you will, you fine-looking kitty cat, you. Oh, no. Dad, Dad, just stop. Just, just stop, man. Just please. Stop. Wow, Vivica. It's such a beautiful day. No, oh, it sure is, Eric. And where is Cool Cat? There he is! I mean, they're clearly the best in the movie, but... God, I feel like they're being wasted here. Hey, Cool Cat! I'm going to clean the sandbox! Would you like to build a sandcastle with me? Fuck. Is it me, or did Maria get younger all of a sudden? Yeah, now I look back on it, she sounds younger too. When was this part of the movie filmed? Like, what, five years ago? So while Cool Cat and Maria go to build a sandcastle, we later find out that Butch is lurking nearby. <laughs> hey, who's that kid? I don't know. Yeah, what the fuck? How do you get past the electric fence? And the dogs! Where are the dogs? This kid should be fucking mince me by now! That kid looks like he's up to trouble. Hmm. He better not be a bully because I don't like bullies. I'll choke the motherfucker! Just like... Just like Grandfather. Oh, look at here! It isn't a cool cat! It's Little Maria! Make it a sandcastle! What did you do? I don't like the sandcastle, so take that! No! No! <gasps> did you see that? That kid kicked sand in Cool Cat's face! And Maria is crying! Well, I'm glad you're describing it to us, you know, as opposed to actually, you know, doing something about it like a respectable adult would. So Butch runs away when the adults come over and Vivica decides to tell Cool Cat about her story involving bullies. Oh, it's okay, Cool Cat. People used to pick on me and then I learned how to react. I learned to empower myself. In other words, I quit being scared of the bully and I yelled at him to leave me alone. And I yelled very loudly. The bully got embarrassed when I yelled at him and he ran away. And I was there and everybody was so happy because that bully Mess with all the kids. Wow! That's an amazing strategy! It can help me to stop bullying! I have a story. One time, a bully was picking on me. Really? Do we need to hear another story? We get it, guys. Bullying is bad. 
And that's another serious problem with this film. It's serious lack of subtlety. Rather than teaching the message in a way that all kids can relate to and understand, it decides to talk down to its audience as if they have the memory of a brick. So after that bit of a pounding on the head with a hammer involving the message, Butch comes back to take the kids' lunch money. Wait a minute, Butch, think for two seconds. Who the fuck takes lunch money to a friend's house? I can't believe it. That bully is back from war. Oh yeah? What the fuck are you gonna do about it? Let me guess. Narrate it, right? Dude, you're not Morgan Freeman, so fucking do something about it! We're not gonna give you our lunch money! I'm not afraid of you anymore, so you better leave us alone! What? You think just cause I got my eyebrows did I can't fight, bitch? Bring it on! But apparently, yelling is enough to scare the bully away. You can just see it on Butch's laughing face that this would really fucking work. Even the actor knows this is complete bullshit. And he's fucking eight. So you think because he finally stood up to a bully, that'd be the end of the movie, right? No. We still have at least half an hour of a film left. So, what are we gonna do? Well, have Cool Cat enter our writing competition, of course, because, as we all know, Cool Cat's definitely been a good writer this whole time. Did I, um... Did I ever mention how much of nothing the story is in this movie? Because it's fucking nothing. So after writing his book about Trolley the Trout, who, ironically enough, is an actual character, again, Derek Savage himself made, we get this weird animation that's playing backwards for some reason. Did I mention that this film has absolutely no story or structure whatsoever? It just does whatever the fuck it wants. Oh, wow! It's such a beautiful day! And I love to have fun a beautiful day! What should I do? I know! I'll do my exercises! Jumping jacks! One, two, three, four! Squats! One, two! Now he's exercising! What does this have to do with bullying or the story or anything really? So after brushing his imaginary teeth, Cool Cat goes down the stairs in the most obnoxious way possible that Daddy Derek has cooked him something tasty. Hope you're hungry, cause we made something tasty. Oh, that's right, honey child. Now sit down. Good, I can't wait. I'm finished, and that was great. Now I'm gonna go outside and play. Cool cat, just stay in the front yard so we know where you're at. I will, I promise. Bye-bye. <laughs> Boy, that cool cat's something else. That's an understatement. Come on, honey, I'll help you clean up here. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Here's one. Let me help you right there. Oh. <laughs> we call this teamwork, huh? Oh, I love teamwork. You didn't see this part. You didn't see what happened next. No, all the reviewers in the world sheltered you from what I saw. Daddy Derek and Mama Cat proceeded to fuck horribly on that sink right there. They called it teamwork. I am duty bound to play the Tenacious D track. That's fucking teamwork. What's your favorite position? That's a boombox. Cool Cat's got a boombox. <laughs> cool Cat loves to boogie woogie. Really? You know what other animated anthropomorphic animal had a boombox? You know, this goes out to all the 90 kids out there, and I am a 90s kid. Born in 94, totally 90s kid, but just because something came out of the 90s doesn't mean it was cool, okay? Sure, it may have been cool at the time, but do you ever see anyone walk around with a boombox on their shoulder anymore? Like, look. Do I look cool or the biggest fucking douchebag in the world? I bet I look like the biggest douchebag in the world, don't I? Gnarly. Hi, cool cat. Hey, buddy, what's happening? Good morning, Mikey Maria. I'm just boogie woogieing. What do you want to do today? Hey, check this out. 
I got a bouncy ball and it's really cool. It glows in the dark and bounces real high. And check this out, it even bounces off your foot. I wonder if Mikey sees that car. I hope he does. Okay, one. How'd you get across the street so fast like that? And two, fucky say something. Whoa, that was close. Thanks for warning me about that car. It's okay, but always look both ways before crossing the street. What's the matter with you running into the street like that? I know, I wasn't thinking. You know, if this kid was like six, I'd probably understand his ignorance about not knowing what to do, but this guy is fucking 12. He's 12. He should know better at this point. It's like common sense. So after that narrow escape, we find out that something horrible has happened. Apparently someone has stolen candy from babies because that's the thing that actually happens in this universe. This is a special news report. Kids beware. There have been several robberies. Bad guys are stealing candy from babies. That's horrible. I love babies. Cool Cat, I think we all love babies, but we don't ever say it like that out loud, ever. Help! Please help me! A boy just took my candy and my school books! Now I have nothing to read! I'll just die without something to read right now! Help! A bully just stole my candy and he's right there! <laughs> I mean, what else is there to say about this? I think, shouldn't anyone, literally anybody watch this scene and kind of, I mean that scene pretty much sums up the whole movie, doesn't it? Lazy, incompetent, stupid, blown out of proportion, literally everything wrong with the film can be summed up in that one scene alone. So Cool Cat finally nuts up and decides to go beat the shit out of Butch by not looking both ways before crossing the road, you big fat fucking hypocrite. Oh, but uh, oh, but look out, cool cat! Bush dropped some candy on the ground. Hope you dodge it epically. Epic. Oh, but it's okay because the police come by, and when Butch runs into his car, he gets fucking arrested immediately. Like, not kidding. He just gets straight up put in the car without any explanation whatsoever. Hell, the kid didn't even get read his rights. Thank you for your help, Cool Cat. That was very heroic. No, it wasn't. It was one of the lamest things I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm, I'm done pretending, guys. I'm done pretending. This film is... I mean, what else is there to say? You, you've seen it. I'm done pretending. This film is awful. And we still have 20 minutes left of this piece of shit! That was so brave. You are a hero, Cool Cat. Yeah, that was groovy. Fuck you. You're just like in the movies. They should make a kid's movie about you. We'll name it Cool Cat Saves the Kid. Oh my god, it's it's come full circle, guys. It's officially come full circle. Maybe now's a good time to end the movie. Please. Please! So after eating more dinner made by Mama Cat, don't want to eat anything off of that counter, they go outside of their backyard to have a treasure hunt for some reason. And what do they find? A conveniently placed gun. Like... Not kidding. There is literally just a gun sitting there for no reason. We get no context as to how it got there. It's just fucking there. I mean, is it, is it Daddy Derek's? Is it Mama's? Did another kid have it and drop it by accident when he snuck through the yard? Did somebody throw it over the wall? Or I am giving this film way too much credit. Why the fuck did I expect a reason? So when Cool Cat and the others find the gun, they decide the best thing to do is to go tell Daddy Derek. But Butch also sees the gun and has a brilliant idea. It's a gun over there. I can bring it to school and take everyone's lunch money. It's going to be that time for me. <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but I have to. A little late for fat time, don't you think it is, fat boy? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. I, I had to. I had no other choice. How does that make you feel? What? Not sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, guys! I just saw Butch the Bully take the gun! What should we do? Should we tell someone he has it? Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that being a tattletale? I don't want to be a snitch. This kid is the stupidest person in the entire fucking movie. And that's saying a lot. 
So after clarifying that it's not tattletailing if a gun's involved, they finally get the balls to tell Daddy Derek. So after Daddy Derek calls Bush's father, we see that weird animation again. This time it's played in the right direction. Okay, couldn't do it the first time. So the next morning, Cool Cat and the others head to school, being escorted by Daddy Derek, and we find that Butch is showing off the gun to another student. Okay, kids, come on, just get inside the school. They'll help us. They'll call the police. What? No! Do not go to the school when there's a gunman there, okay? Even if it's just a fat blonde kid showing it off. Don't go to a school when you know there's a gun there. Ever. Daddy Derek calls the police, and the police come, and of course, they arrest the kid again. Making this all kind of pointless, I mean, he was arrested once, and whatever. Who, who fucking cares, am I right? Who the fuck cares? We're proud of you, cool cat. What the? Who the fuck are you? No, seriously, who are you? Where did you come from? Where were you in this movie earlier? You know what? No. No. I'm done. It's over. This, this movie's practically over. There's like ten minutes left. It's done. I don't fucking care. Do this movie can do whatever it wants. I don't fucking care. Let's just let's wrap this shit up because I'm fucking sick of the shit. So Cool Cat goes home with Maria. He finds out that he won that writing contest, and that bully from earlier comes back to apologize. Hey, wait a minute. That's not the kid. No, really, that was a totally different kid. Oh, my mom was gonna love me. My mama got me out, and she spanked my butt. Oh man. What the fuck? Now they're just suddenly changing the actors in the middle of the movie? Are you serious? Is this racist? I... I'm just gonna assume it's racist. So the film finally ends with yet another tagged on message about cyberbullying, saying that if you're ever cyberbullied, the best thing to do is to just ignore them. The thing that Cool Cat specifically didn't do in the beginning of the movie. Oh, but the film isn't done yet. Despite the credits finally coming in, we get a little mid credit scene with the entire cast of Cool Cat Saves the Kids Literally saying, again, the point of the movie, like you're fucking dumb. Hey, I'll tell you what, guys. Always remember, please, Cool Cat loves you, and if you want to be a Cool Cat, don't you be bullying with nobody, because it's not cool. Yeah! And all I gotta say about that is, fuck you, Cool Cat. Fuck you! Cool Cat Saves the Kids is fucking awful. I mean, awful. It's insulting to the viewers. It treats you like you're a moron. The characters are obnoxious, dated, or just plain awkward and creepy. The story is, for the most part, about half of it just filler, and the rest of it is just hammered on bullshit about a stupid message that is pretty obvious when you just look at the fucking title. Cool Cat Saves the Kids. More like Cool Cat Wastes My Fucking Time. I get this is a film made for six-year-olds with a budget of a ham sandwich, but there is no fucking excuse for this shit at all. But, despite all the criticism I've had about this film, it's one of the funniest fucking movies I've ever seen. As much as I want to hate this fucking movie, there comes these random moments that just make it all worth it in the while. <laughs> That guy who's walking outside to take his trash out and just backs away slowly. Cool cat running out of his house with a boombox. Face it, you kind of gotta watch this movie. It may be insulting and stupid and boring and bland all the way through, but it's kind of worth it to see all the stupid, horrible incompetence this film has to offer you. There are a lot of movies out there that are literally so bad they're good, but in my opinion, Cool Cat Saves the Kids takes the Golden Turd Trophy. And that's why, in my opinion, I actually kind of recommend it. Alright, let's get serious here, guys. Let's actually talk, in reality, about bullying. When I was growing up in elementary school, I got bullied a lot growing up. I won't say any names, but let's just say elementary school fucking sucked for me. I mean, it got better in middle school as I met some good friends and I often hung out with them. But high school, we all split apart, and the bullies came back. It got to a point where I got into a really bad fight in ninth grade, and I got suspended, and the bully got off scot-free, because I was the one who threw the first punch. I know, fair, right? But let's have a real talk about this. In reality, bullies are never really this extreme that this movie is presented to you. In reality, they could just be people who are just as tortured as you are. 
For the most part, bullies tend to just be people who are victims of abuse themselves. Whether it again be from a domestic abuse or like maybe they're going through a bad relationship with a girlfriend or they're having a bad parent or they're just stressed out by school or some other thing. Bullies aren't really that bad. I mean, okay, their actions are bad, but that doesn't always necessarily mean the bully is bad. I took inspiration from characters like Aang from the Avatar The Last Airbender and Batman from Batman the Animated Series. And what's one thing they always had? Compassion. No matter how hard the enemies took a swing at them, Batman and Aang always seem to have a bit of love for their enemies. Why? Because it's decent. It's a decent humanly thing to do. Sure, it's kind of hard to have a bit of sympathy for your enemies, but maybe try. Having a little sympathy and compassion might actually change them. I know it's kind of weird since I just harped about Cool Cat doing in this film, but I mean, it's not going to be that simple. This film is really dumbed down, but in reality, lending a hand can actually maybe have a huge impact. Bullying had a very serious impact on me, and it led me to a point where I was literally willing to commit suicide. Hell, there was even a time in 11th grade where I tried to commit suicide. That's why I got this on my wrist, to remind myself to never go back to that place again. And I probably never would have, would have done that if somebody was there for me. Like I said, my friends were never really around, the teachers never understood, and my parents, to be honest, probably made the situation worse. However, there were two things in my life that did make it worth the while, and did help a lot. Music, and YouTube. I found a bunch of bands that, while a lot of you may make fun of me for enjoying, I really did enjoy, and they really meant a lot to me when I grew up. And YouTube taught me how to laugh again. And I think that's why I'm making these videos for you guys. Because they make me happy, and they make you happy, and that's all I ever really want to do. Life isn't perfect, but it has perfect moments. Take that for what it's worth. It meant a lot to me, and it inspired me. That's why I do both critical reviews on here, and I play games too. Why not do both? I enjoy both. I enjoy the Nostalgia Critic as much as I enjoy Markiplier. I enjoy watching Bob Show as much as I enjoy Vanos Gaming. I can do both. Who's saying I can't? The point is, these people were there for me when no one else was. And they helped me get off my feet, and they helped me to chase a dream. Now I'm 21 years old, and I'm happy I'm alive. And I will never go back to that place where I was before. I got the compassion I needed from both these songs and these YouTubers. So all I can say is to these people, thank you for helping me move on. So with that being said, um, Bob... I gave you some links in my email when I sent you this video. If you could kindly leave those links in the description for your channel, let these people see them. There are a couple songs that really meant the world to me growing up. Like I said, they may not be yours. They're not all death. They're not all like no, 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 no. They're not. They're not all that. I promise. They're there are different varieties. There's some punk in there. There's, there's a bit of metal. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rocker, but there's also rock and roll. There's some older stuff in there. All in all, there's some good stuff in there. Maybe check it out. It might help you. You never, never, you never know. It might get you through the day. But if you're not a music fan, that's that's fine. You don't have to click on the links. That's I'm just saying. I'm just putting these out there. Maybe because they'll help you. Maybe. I mean, they help me. Maybe they'll help you too. That's all I gotta say. But back to the bullying thing. Bullying is something that really needs to stop. Because it is something that can really hurt someone. Psychologically destroy them and even kill them. It is something that has, in fact, in the past, killed before. Whether someone's being bullied over being gay or being small or having glasses or really any reason, it's not okay. And this is really destroying them in ways far worse than getting beaten up every day did. So if you see someone getting bullied, Please, stand up for them. Stand by these people and help them find the strength to stand up too. And that alone will help them immensely. We're living in a world where gays can now get married, where people can now make a living off the internet just by making silly videos, and we're getting one step closer to world peace every day. Sure, that might end very soon, but it's nice to dream, right? So, if you want to change the world and make the world a better place, then you gotta start somewhere. 
this stuff can really kill someone. It really can. That's why we have to stand together to stop it. And it needs to happen now. My name is Razorblade, and always, 